Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at the first section in the chapter 11 where we're going to be talking about the IO reader interface. So in chapter 10, we're looking at IO writer. Now we're going to look at IO reader. Now, um, for this section, we're actually going to implement, do two implementations of the IO reader interface. Um, there's some other caveat that we have to look at in the IO reader in terms of how you use it and how you implement it, but we're going to get to that um, towards the end of the chapter. So probably in section two or three, but um, for now, we're just going to, since we've got a feel for how to implement these interfaces from chapter nine, and then in chapter 10, when we look at the writer, I figured out we can pack in two examples here. So let's get to it. And so just to look at the documentation here, if you go on the website, the Golang um, page, and you look at packages IO, um, the package IO, and then you look at the reader um, type, and it says reader is the interface that wraps the basic read method. Again, no surprise there. And read reads up to length p bytes into p. And so basically you're gonna pass a slice to it. And remember a slice is this um, object that sort of hides the underlying uh, array. So when you pass a slice, you're not passing a cut. You pass, well, you may cut passing a copy of the slice itself here quotes. Um, the underlining both would still point to the same underlining array, hence why you know you can still have access to that underlining array to write and read into it. And so it returns the bytes, um, the number of bytes read, okay? And so depending on the size, of course, you can put more than the length of P, and of course, you could put zero depending. And that's what we're going to get into in the future um, sections uh, is when it makes sense to return zero and how you as the reader of this interface, a user of this interface, of a, a reader, uh, reader interface, was the best way of using it. So if you like, you can continue and read this part, which is basically what we're gonna talk about later, but in the other sections is what I'm talking about, the caveat, but it's just as you expect, sort of from like uh, the writer, um, you're gonna read as much as you can into this slice that's passed in, and you're gonna return how many you were able to Put into the slice so the reader the person who's using the interface can say well i give you a slice of 20 and you were only able to read 10 bytes into it or 20 in order to you filled it up or if you didn't read anything you return zero and then we'll see when it makes sense to return whether zero and nil or zero and other types of error but let's just do the very simple thing and implement like we said in our objective here a read counter and a bytes read counter okay and so that's all we're gonna do for today so let's just get, jump right in and so go source uh, github and then our user and then uh, let's see here we're going to so let's do mkdcd and we're going to do chapter 11 and io that uh, reader um, so where did I put uh, so 10 uh, oh, you know what let's just make this here I right, a reader and I should rename all right for now I'll leave it as that so okay mkcd again we're talking about chapter 11 section 01 and let's call this um, read counter and so code and we will start here mean that go and let's increase the font there and package and then font main as usual and um, this is um, Let's see, read counter. Okay. And so we know from the last time when we tried doing this, we used just simply what we did was we did a counter, you know, um, I can't remember what we call it. Um, so let's call it um, read counter. When we did it with a writer, we did like um, int or some unsigned int, for example, 64, right? And then we have to worry about when we pass a pointer, the reference in the pipe the pointer so we're gonna do struct instead 
because that's one of the to do's was to fix up those two examples to use a struct. And so then we're gonna say that we have count and it's on sign 64 because we just know that we're never gonna have a negative value. Okay, and so we're gonna implement two things, right? We're gonna implement font, um, the stringer interface for this. So we can say if we have a read counter, a receiver, that's a read counter and string method that returns string. So we can print this out. Uh, what we wanna do is return fmt.sprintf and we wanna return the current um, count of how many bytes was read and so how many times this interface was called and so percent v and there we go and we're going to return r that count okay so that makes sense and that's pretty easy now the interface we do want to implement is this guy so read counter but we know how we want to be able to make change okay so it's the read method and it takes a slice of byte and um, some uh, and then it returns um, and int and then error from the errors interface okay and so now we know that we want to be able to change this um, thing so we was pass here so we need a pointer instead a copy and so we're going to say every time the interface is called to read some bytes from somewhere which we're not going to be with the user pass in a, some byte we're not going to modify it because it's just a byte counter right now so we're not going to modify it we're not actually going to read any bytes into it and modify the p the slice p so but we're going to keep track of how many um bytes they want us to read and assume that oh, we can read it successfully so we're going to add a uh, length of you know um, p and now this is going to probably complain because length here is going to return uh, int and we have to cast this to um, u int 64 and so we'll cast the length of that to u in 64 and since we are assuming that we always if we're going to be adding how many the slice of the um, buffer here to our count we are assuming that oh, we always read the amount that is specified so we should definitely return you know the length of p and in this case we can return nil because there's no error right now we'll get into the other cases when like i said when it could be different so um let's assume that oh we had we want to create a read counter so we said var uh, read counter is a uh, read counter and it doesn't really matter so let's just say we had var buff uh, buffer zero um, or let's say slice zero um, is some byte slice and that's zero byte slice and then var s1 is equals to make you know some slice of bytes and we'll make you know 20 or something like that and we'll make this 56 and we'll call this s2 and so what we want to be able to do is say a read counter that read and then s0 you know read into that and then here read into one and read into two and then after all this reading we want to do fmt print lin and we want to print out um, this read counter and so what we should expect is this is zero so um, we just count in the number of times oh, actually this is our I've <laughs> I went ahead and implemented our bytes counter instead of our read counter so we should probably copy this code because uh, we're gonna need that next okay so our read counter here should only be incrementing every time we, we do a read so that's just incrementing by one or if you want we could do plus plus one plus plus okay so that's all we're really doing and again we're gonna assume that how uh, we just count since we count in a number of times this interface is called that this is okay okay all right, so I don't trust my editor again. I've yet to figure out what's going on there. I've been thinking about it, but I haven't come up to any 
conclusion yet as to I probably what I might do to be able to fix it. So uh, go run main and okay, what is it? Expecting literal, hmm, where's 14? Um, so var make equals, um, oh, this is 21 instead of S2. This is supposed to be S2. Oh, there we go. And Okay. Um, let's see where where. Okay, let me run and see. Okay, fine. Okay, so it, it works, right? We call this interface three times, and it works. And if I call it um, another two times, we should see. Um, and it doesn't. I didn't. I did not need um, different. So five times. Okay. So that is our read counter. So we are going to save that as, leave that as that is. And so here I'm gonna create another directory and I'm gonna call it mkdcd and I'm gonna call it bytes counter. And actually I should just copy the code we have here. And I'm gonna copy this code to bytes counter and I'm going to quit this for now and then reopen really open it inside of bytes come for example and here we go and we saw from before I copied that code in memory so if I paste this back this is exactly the code for you know counting the number of bytes and so here I don't really have to do anything By thread counter and this should work the same except no instead of just incrementing by one it increments by how many bytes we read and so this should tell me how many that is and so I run the code and there we have 96 bytes were read and that's because twice we read zero but we read 20 and 20 that's 40 and 50 is 90 and 6 96 so this is working fine again very 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 simple examples a little bit contrived but not too contrived again um, and then in the next video we can keep this nice and short we're gonna look at turning um, structures into bytes so you can read the representation of something into a string of bytes and then um, we can see how of course, once we have to do that, how we could pair that up with the one where we had to write, where you write a string of bytes into a person. Well, now we're doing the other side of that um, equation, which is how you take a person and turn it into a string of bytes. Then after that, we're going to talk about how you correctly deal with reading, and like I said, those caveat and what kind of value you can return where you're the implementer. All right, take care. See you in the next video. Um, it seems like if I sped through this, but that's because. I think these examples are pretty simple now and you're probably getting the idea. Um, I haven't had any complaint about people not understanding this part of the material. So they don't want to waste um, your time by making two videos for these very two simple examples. So take care. See you in the next video. Um, bye. And again, please hit that thumbs up button if you like what you're seeing, if, you enjoy, if you're enjoying the material. And again, I ask you to please keep spreading the word. And I do want to thank you for your time. Take care. Have a great day.